2024 is here and with Gotcha Games, as every year, we have a ton of anticipated games either announced to be launching this year or expected to be launching this year. And in this video, I'm going to go through my personal top 10 for these. Now, there is going to be way more games than this and there could be some absolute bangers that we don't even know about yet. But once again, this is just my list. So if you have any others for me to look at, please leave it in the comments. I'll probably be playing all of these games plus several other games this year as they come out. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first one on my list is going to be Solo Leveling Arise. Now, this is what I am super excited for. It is by Netmarble, which for some people is a red flag due to monetization and stuff mainly. For me, I don't really care. I normally play free to play. I'm just looking forward to the game because Netmarble do make pretty well polished games in my opinion. Uh, but for this one, it is more the IP that is dragging me in. Solo Leveling is the only manhwa that I've read and I absolutely loved it. So a great IP to go in to make a game with. Now, as for the actual game itself, it's going to be an action RPG. I'm assuming it's going to be instance-based, not going to be open world. People always compare things to Genshin. It's not going to be open world like Genshin. It's going to be more instance-based, but I'm hoping from what we've seen that the boss fights are going to be complex and really make you think and have some fun in them. So we'll have to wait and see exactly how it works. We don't know all the core systems yet and stuff like that because they have been pretty tight-lipped and there has been no beta, no foreign version, anything like that. And I'm really hoping that they just go ahead and drop this as global. As for release date, uh, I'm anticipating end of March. They did say uh, in a conference call that they like unofficially would be ready for Q1. And then for their release date now, it was previously going to release in 2023. Now they are saying spring. So I assume, you know, maybe late March could be when we see it. But once again, no information. I will give you guys the full info once they release it. Next, we have Zenless Zone Zero by Hoyoverse. Now being Hoyoverse, we're obviously going to draw a big crowd with this one. As for release date, I would expect it to be in quarter one this year. However, we will have to wait and see. Maybe they push it back. Once again, no official announcement on that yet. And I will let you guys know once we do know. But for this one, uh, from the beta, the combat is very fluid and it feels fun. It's not as in-depth and complex, at least from what I played. This is just my personal opinion. Uh, not as in-depth as Punishing Grey Raven, where it's very dynamic. Every battle's different because you've got a different type of system. Uh, however, it does just feel very fluid and fun. The camera panning changes and stuff like that make it feel very like uh, very flashy and, and, and fun in that sense. Uh, however, they do have this TV system, which has been the main criticism from most people that I've seen, as well as myself. It's just too much. There's too much much of this TV system, which is meant to be like a roguelike type system, but it's not engaging for me personally. And it made me struggle. I didn't get into the end game in the beta uh, purely because I just couldn't battle my way through doing this TV system. So I'm curious to see if that changes. I will definitely play the game at launch uh, and see if there's any changes. Uh, maybe obviously being a full launch, I will push into the end game and then see if that holds more for me. But that was my first impressions from Zenless Zone Zero. And like I said, expecting Q1, but could be later. Next is Wuthering Waves. Now, this is by Kura Game, the same makers of Punishing Grey Raven. This one had a beta probably, I want to say like almost six months ago. I am expecting this one to have a beta somewhere around quarter one this year and maybe release in Q2 or Q3. Once again, this is very vague. There has been nothing official about that, about a release date, but that is just the sort of vibe I get from it. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, this one, uh, I think this has been... One one of the most highly anticipated games since it was announced. Punishing Grey Raven in itself was a really good game. It, In my personal opinion, as I mentioned before, it probably had one of the best action RPG combats, uh, in my personal opinion, the systems it used. Now, Wuthering Waves is going to be a different system, but I think they're going to keep that core of wanting to have real hard boss fights, real engaging combat. And I think that's where this game is going to find its niche, is that it is... A lot of people will compare it to Genshin with the overworld and stuff like that, but it's more the dynamic combat and the in-depth combat that they'll probably get to, tough boss fights and stuff like that, that is that it's going to try and separate itself with. So we'll have to wait and see that that goes. They've also got other features that I really like, like things like when you defeat enemies in the world, you can capture their 
soul as such if that's the easiest way for me to describe it and then you can use them as like power-ups during battle where they come out and they help you out and i think those types of systems are really cool and i think there's a lot of depth they can go into with those types of systems for people who want to collect characters and stuff like that so i think this game is very promising i didn't play the first beta personally so this is just based off what i've seen from others playing it uh but i'm really hoping that they will have another beta soon and that i can get into it and give you guys my thoughts next up is a game because i had nine on my list and i had to come up with another one so this one goes on here this one is gonna be one punch man world i chose this one because it is a big ip however this one is by crunchyroll who in my opinion don't have the greatest track record if you jump into this one it actually launches at the end of january uh so if you want to play it you will be able to i will personally play it and see how it goes uh it's very very similar to my hero academia the strongest hero um and yeah i mean if the combat that's good i'm really looking forward to playing a bit of it and testing it out uh but once again i don't really have many red flags with companies like i said earlier on that um you know things like netmarble don't really bother me but crunchyroll is that one that is just infamous for milking a game and shutting it down so we'll have to wait and see how that goes but one punch man world it is a big ip it is a decently presented game so it is one that if you like the ip jump in test it out free to play <laughs> caution on spending Next, we have Seven Deadly Sins Origin. Now, this one is also going to be by Netmarble, and this is a game I'm really looking forward to based on the IP. I just really like Seven Deadly Sins, and it's another game that is going to get heavily compared to Genshin because it is open world action combat. So this one, we don't actually know anything about a release window. I haven't heard anything about betas for the game, but we have known about the game for probably over a year now. So really curious to see when this one does come out. I am definitely expecting 2024 sometime, but who knows maybe it does get pushed back even further but like i said this one from the gameplay that they have showed looks really cool i think with the seven deadly sins ip you do have a lot of options for this one that really excite me a lot of cool characters that could make this type of gameplay really fun so we'll have to see where they go uh netmarble obviously did seven deadly sins grand cross uh they do things like the combo attacks and stuff like that i'd love to see that sort of thing in this style of game as well we'll have to wait and see but in general i'm really looking forward to this one hopefully they deliver it this year and hopefully it's pretty good now we have an idle game on my list now this may come out of left field for some people i know a lot of people are just into the more action-based type gacha games but for me i've played afk arena over on my first youtube channel for about four or five years now uh, and this is their sort of second game in the franchise which is afk journey it is another idle based game uh but it's more TFT type uh, hex grid style of combat while still having those idle aspects but still having a sort of overworld that you can run around and explore do little puzzles and stuff like that now like I said for me I'm really close to this one because I have played AFK Arena for so long and I just really like the IP and I think this one is going to be delivered really well I really like the art style of this as well so there's a lot of things this one has going for it for me personally but I know it may not hit as many people looking at these other games like Hoyoverse games and stuff like that but for this one if you're into idle games uh, I definitely recommend giving this one a try and they did actually announce their release date for March over on the Apple Store so expected for March but that is never an official release date so we are still waiting for an official announcement for the actual release date but expecting this one in March. Now we have Arknight's Endfield. Now this is one I personally don't have much experience with. I know my mate uh, Chaotic uh, has done a lot of gameplay in the first beta there is another beta currently ongoing i unfortunately didn't get into it could be because i didn't apply for it but hey who knows but this one is one i will definitely try when it goes global it doesn't strike me quite like things like uh wuthering waves and solo leveling and seven deadly sins but it still looks like a really nice game and i'm curious to see the performance of this game because it is really well developed it looks well polished uh the combat style is more action based but it's sort of more action based with telegraphs and stuff like that it's hard to explain from what i've seen uh the exact feeling of it without actually jumping in and playing it myself so definitely go check out some of those creators there will be tons of content on the beta from this game out on youtube that you guys can go and check out but i'm definitely curious to see who the target audience is who gets into this game whether it be arknight players or whether it's other players from other gacha games who like this style or whether it's both i'm curious to see the success of this game and i will definitely jump into it at global launch or if i somehow manage to get beta access after the beta started after i didn't apply so we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, that is Arknight's Enfield.
Now we have Project Mugen. Now this is a game that sort of came out of nowhere. I want to say around September-ish. Don't quote me on that. Last year they released a trailer. There was nothing else about it. Like until then, there was just like a trailer dropped and everyone got on board with it. I think the biggest thing that everyone was noticing was the Spider-Man style uh, slinging around the town and stuff like that. I think the aesthetic of this game looks really nice. From what I've seen from the trailer, looks solid. But besides that, I can't really go too much more in depth on it because I don't really know much more than that one but i know this one is definitely getting some traction and getting a lot of people's attention so definitely one to look out for and one i will definitely be playing as well the next one on my list is one piece dream pointer another fantastic ip which i am just about 300 episodes into myself at the moment and absolutely loving it so the one piece franchise is massive i feel like this one's going to get a lot of people however with this one this one is a bit of a curveball in the list because it is releasing a cn version expected on the apple store store for April 1 this year, which means if it does go global, we don't have a confirmation or anything like that. But I wanted to put this one in here to just draw to people's attention in case it does get a global launch this year. It would be definitely a pretty hype game. Uh, now, the system is kind of similar to Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross with your card system. However, I believe from the gameplay that I have seen that it does function a little bit different. But in general, it's that same sort of thing as your Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. You've got the overworld that you kind of explore. It's not complete open world as such and then you get into your battles you use the card based system which is honestly a system I personally really enjoyed so definitely looking forward to I will play this one on the CN version when it does launch uh, and then obviously wait and hopefully hear something about a global version later in the year or possibly next year if we have to wait that little bit longer and the final game on my list is Girls Frontline 2 I believe the word is Exilium that goes after it but let's just call it Girls Frontline 2 now I played the CN beta a while back it has gone into full release in CN. I haven't played it since the release myself personally. This one is a grid-based shooter, which I actually really enjoyed. The two criticisms I had of it was that combat felt a little bit slow uh, and also that it used, it, it had a very limited roster of characters, which obviously will expand. And it had like the, the Genshin type systems for summoning where you get very low income and stuff like that. Now I've heard that they have fixed some of this stuff uh, in the actual release, but in general, this game really well presented really cool combat just for something different in the gotcha space which I did really enjoy and as long as we can speed it up a little bit so it doesn't take uh, as long for characters to you know run to their position which was the bit that sort of felt a little bit delayed then I think this game will be really really strong uh, but we'll have to wait and see for a global launch like I said already released in CN makes me think that we could be pretty close to getting an announcement for a global version so that is going to be it for my list of my top 10 games coming in 2024 like I said, this is not a complete list of every game coming out and definitely there could be better ones on the way. You guys let me know if you know of any others and as always, I'm going to jump into every game as they come out and test them because I just enjoy these gotcha games. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.